KRK4, your weather authority. Well, a cold front continues to cross Arkansas rather uneventfully tonight. No clouds to speak of, just a wind shift from south and southwesterly to north and northwesterly. And that'll bring in slightly cooler temperatures as we head into the middle of the work week. Most places in northern Arkansas, a few degrees cooler than yesterday. And here in central and southern Arkansas, maybe one or two degrees cooler than what we saw this morning. Your forecast first for Little Rock. We are expecting clear skies overnight tonight, 52 degrees at 7 o'clock. We're going to start your th Tuesday around 32 degrees. We've got 70s or near 70s in the forecast, but a return to winter is on the way. We'll let you know when to expect it. KRK 4 News at 6 starts now. Now, from the station you count on for local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 6. Tonight, we are focusing on money matters, and there is a renewed push to increase Arkansas State's minimum wage, and that money matters to a lot of folks. Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. I'm Bob Clausen. Ashley has the evening off. The current state minimum wage, $6.25, while the federal minimum wage is at $7.25. There's a difference there. Arkansas's minimum wage hasn't moved in nearly eight years, and those living at or near that line say it's now time for a change. One mom speaking out to KRK4 is David Goins about a new plan to raise the minimum wage. David? Bob, supporters of the plan still need the attorney general to sign off on the language and then collect signatures. But for one mom who is living near that minimum wage line, she says this idea is long overdue. For Janelle Howard, time with her three kids is number one, but making life work near minimum wage, no easy task. $8, $7.25, back in the yard in the streets. Labor groups, along with the NAACP and faith-based organizations, pushing an initiative to raise the lowest pay for Arkansas workers. We felt like eight fifty was probably about where we needed to be. But Pastor Stephen Copley says it won't get there overnight. A ballot initiative would raise the minimum wage to $7.50 in 2015, with 50 cent increases every year until topping out at a rate of $8.50 an hour in 2017. You try to find a, a figure that um, you think folks will um, be agreeable to, that, um, that will somehow pass. Copley hopes voters get the chance to weigh in next November. For Howard, it's a start. But she says even an improved minimum wage is far from a living wage. If you're at minimum wage or even above minimum wage, you're going to eventually have to work two jobs just to make ends meet or instead of constantly from paycheck to paycheck and be worried. The Arkansas Hospitality Association has opposed other minimum wage increase efforts in the past, citing increased prices as well as possible job layoffs. For now, we're live outside the state capitol. David Goins, KRK4 News. All right, David, thank you very much. And when it comes to the federal minimum wage, 4.4 million workers were paid at that wage in 2011, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. More than half of those workers are younger than 25 years old, and only 4% of all workers make minimum wage or less. Arkansas teachers are avoiding huge health insurance increases starting next year. That's because the legislature stepped in earlier this fall. Now lawmakers say they want to avoid the same teacher insurance crisis from ever happening again. The first task force designated to look at the problems with the health plan and come up with a long-term solution meeting today at the state capitol. Are there better ways to administer you know, health benefits for a significant number of our Kansans? And the truth is, the answer is yes. I mean, because the teachers and the state employees plan is the largest self-insured, self-funded plan in the state of Arkansas. The teacher insurance task force will come up with a report next summer in order for the legislature to take action in the next regular session in 2015. New jobs coming to the natural state. This morning, Governor Mike Beebe paid a visit to Mountain Home, where a company known for making high-performance work surfaces, tabletops, things like that for research and healthcare facilities, made an announcement. The company is called Apoxin Products. The company makes laboratory equipment and furniture, as mentioned. They're expected to bring at least 50 new jobs to the Mountain Home area. And turning to safety matters this evening, safety on the minds tonight of city leaders in Little Rock hoping to tear down more than a dozen homes across the city. Properties on the chopping block because they've been determined to be unsafe. Gary Kimura is Josh Berry joining us now from one of those. Josh, what's the city saying they're planning on doing here? 
Bob, the city says homes like these are simply unsafe, dilapidated, deteriorating, and in some cases burned. This one, for example, got a collapsed in roof. You can only imagine what it looks like on the inside. And that's not the only one on this block. The one right next door and the, at the end of the block as well. These are just three of 13 all around the city slated for potential demolition. The housing department says homes like these can cause a negative impact on the surrounding communities. There's a there's a school just two blocks away. Kids walking up and down these streets in the evenings. The surround the, but one group of course says not so fast and that tearing them down doesn't have to be their only option. City Board of Directors will decide tonight whether to tear down 13 residential structures. The first step would of course to be to tear them down. However, the group called Stop the Demolition says, quote, this demolition derby has done nothing but convert these neglected and unsightly houses into neglected and unsightly weed lots. That's your tax dollars at work. I don't have all the answers. I don't think anybody has all the answers, but we need to be having a discussion and we need to be looking at the policies which are supposed to be helping to stabilize the neighborhood, but in reality are putting these neighborhoods at more and more of a disadvantage. They say that some of the empty lots can collect trash and cause, in some cases, even more problems. Tearing down these homes, 13 homes will likely cost the city upwards of $48,000. But, of course, the city just goes back to this being a safety issue. Safety matters to them. The city council meeting started at 6 tonight. We'll have the latest on what they decide. We're live in Little Rock. Josh Berry, KARK, 4 News. As safety vehicles race by. Okay, Josh, thank you very much. Drive sober or get pulled over. That's the message Arkansas State Police sending out this holiday season. Officials gathered this morning to announce the beginning of the drunk and impaired driving crackdown. We're asking all our Kansans to take extra uh, caution during this upcoming holiday period. Think before you drink and make the right decision before getting behind the wheel. To MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, 28 people a day died due to drunk driving crashes. And in health matters, Arkansas has come a long way in cutting down on smoking. According to a new report, Arkansas ranks seventh in the nation when it comes to funding programs to prevent children from smoking and helping smokers quit. Not too bad. The study says Arkansas smoking rates among high school students decreased 58% between 1997 and 2011. Tobacco advertisers spend $107.4 million in Arkansas. That's six times what the state spends on prevention. The report was put together by the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, the American Heart Association, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. To read more about it, just go to our website, ArkansasMatters.com. And happening right now, there could be more traffic headed toward Bass Pro Shop in Little Rock. Tonight, city leaders are voting on plans to expand with more stores and attractions there. The development is called Gateway Town Center. City leaders are hoping to reel in millions of dollars in tax revenue through the project. Proposed plans include banks, hotels, and outlet mall with 80 stores. The board is set to approve a plan tonight. Of course, we're bringing the latest on this coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Turning now to education matters, technology is becoming increasingly important in the classroom. And teachers at Little Rock School District undergoing computer training today. A room full of teachers at the Metro Career and Tech Center on Scott Hamilton Drive upgrading their skills for a new pilot program called one-to-one -one technology initiative. The program will allow fourth and fifth grade students from Otter Creek, Roberts, Forest Park, and Gibbs schools to take laptops home with them every day. The district says it's never too early to prepare students for college and beyond. I think that it is important um, for students to get, begin to get that exposure because this is something that's not ever going to go away. Technology is here to stay and it's going to be here. Each student will get one laptop and a charger. The goal, the district says, is to eventually replace textbooks with laptops. Parent information meetings will begin in January for students who receive those laptops. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, more on a very generous donation helping premature babies grow healthy and strong. Stay with us. And if there were some leaves on the trees today, you might have thought it was an actual spring day. High temperature in Little Rock up to 68. Our average high for this time of year, 52. We've got temperatures near 70 in the forecast. And then a return to more reality temperatures back in the 40s next week. The details are straight ahead. From the station that brings you local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 6 in high definition. With Bob Clausen, Ashley Katz, Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan, and Aaron Peters with your Razorback Nation report.